Welcome to Milla Milia, the game, written as 1000 Milia there, or 1000 Miles. This is a game that was made in the early 90s, released in 1991 by Simul Mondo, uh, a little studio out of Italy, actually. Italy's premier video game studio, it sounds like, from the 90s. Uh, and it simulates, or replicates somewhat, the Milla Milia, one of the most famous road races uh, in all of road racing history, all of sports car history especially pre-World War II, and that's exactly what we have here. It's a pretty interesting one. Uh, it's definitely not a simulator, so don't uh, don't come here expecting that. But I wanted to take a look at this because it is, from everything I can tell, the first historic racing game that was ever, ever released. I, I said it was released in 1991. It uh, came out for DOS and the Amiga. We're actually looking at the Amiga version here because it looks a little bit nicer, actually. Not on all the menu screens, but in-game, actually. It uh, is a little bit nicer than the DOS version, but both are pretty interesting. And yeah, it aims to replicate this Milla Milia event, and it does it in a really interesting way. It's actually quite a fun little game to pick up and play. Extremely difficult as games were at this time, but see how much of it I can get through here. You can tell that this game was a little bit of a passion project for the developers at Simul Mondo. Uh, I'll take a snippet of their manual and how they talk about this, but they say, the first drivers to participate in the race looked and acted more like transatlantic airplane pilots of the day than like automobile racers. They were pioneers of road racing where the difficulties and hazards of unpaved streets replete with rocks, dust and mud when it rained, had to be faced and overcome in regular everyday assembly line cars. And the manual goes on and on with writing like this. There's a three or four page introduction, which talks all about the event. But the Milia Milia was a really important event in racing. It was a, a thousand mile journey all throughout Italy on basically public streets with regular road cars. It wasn't as much a motorsports competition, at least in the early days, like we think of them today. It was a race against the clock uh, and just trying to make it to the end in a race that took almost 24 hours to, to race by the looks of it. Uh, it was quite the event indeed. So the game itself lets you drive from 1927 through 1933, and there's two actual modes from what I can tell in the game. There's either a mode where you pick an existing driver, all of the greats from the time, Fiagioli, Nuvolari, of course. Um, you can pick and drive as them in their cars and race through different seasons of the race. I'd like to think that's kind of like the quick drive type mode. Uh, but then there's also somewhat of a career mode where you can create your own drivers uh, and then race through all the seasons. And so we'll actually start that off. I have no disillusion that we're actually going to complete uh, the event. It's so difficult to do, but I thought it'd be fun to create our own drivers and go through that experience here. So we get to pick our two drivers, and it's a little RPG-like, um, I guess, for our lead driver. And there is, of course, two drivers per car. There's a, a driver and then a mechanic. And in this event, they would actually switch seats occasionally so that the mechanic would drive and the driver could rest. It was a full day of racing. But we'll have old Mario here, uh, I guess, be our driver. We got three stats for him that you can basically spend skill points on. And it's not too indicative how this works, but you can't go max out in all the stats. You either have to pick your skill. Uh, resistance or mechanics. From what I can tell, my limited experience here, the skill is what controls your handling, and so I want my driver to be very good at that. Uh, resistance is probably how likely they are to have some kind of incident. I'm actually going to lower the skill a little bit. Um, and so I want that to be quite high as well. And then mechanics uh, doesn't really matter <laughs> or I don't actually know, but I'm going to say it doesn't matter so much for my driver. But I want my driver, my main driver, Mario, here to have high skill so he can handle high resistance so that things don't crash me out. Then I can pick my favorite leg. And from what I can tell, this just makes you better at everything on that leg. And I should say the whole race, like it was in real life, uh, is organized into different legs. Uh, and I think there's... 12 or 14 of them in the game itself. We'll see that in a minute with the map. Uh, but you can pick, you know, what section of the road you're good at. And the manual kind of explains this, that drivers in the day uh, would have been familiar with certain parts of the route, and then others were like driving blind, um, almost like you're from one of these towns or something. So I guess we'll say for old Mario here that he's very good from Rome, uh, Roma to Spoleto. I don't know where that is, but that's where he's very good at. Then we'll have our co-driver, I bet you think I'm going to go with Luigi, but I wouldn't do that. 
we'll go with Linguini here. Uh, and this is going to be mainly our mechanics. So we actually want them to be very good with mechanics, maybe not maxed out. Um, quite high with resistances if we can. And then skill itself, not so important. Uh, although this guy does have to drive occasionally. So what I've tried to do in my strategy here is make sure that their favorite leg um, is the one I actually drive them on. So we'll pick it here. And you see all the stats go down. I wonder if that's to compensate uh, for having a favorite leg. But we'll say um, maybe right after the Roma leg, we'll actually have our, our second driver drive. I'm sure there's a way to optimize this and have um, have them be different so that, you know, your car is always going quick or going quick through difficult sections. But these will be our two favorite legs. And then can choose the car. All right. And there's a few different cars in this game. Um, I think we're starting in 1927 here, so we only really get to pick from the early cars. Uh, but a different selection of Alfa Romeos. We got this Alfa Romeo RL Super Sport. Basically a road car, that's what these were that raced in the event. We've got the RL Supersport Mila Milia. I feel like that's a good one to pick. It's named after the event itself. Uh, we've got the Izata, uh, which I've not heard of. And you can see down here we have different ratings and things for the cars as well. Uh, handling is one I'm very interested in, and resistance, since you seem to hit everything on a high resistant car. We have Alancia here. See a lot of these on the track, you'll see that in a minute. Uh, but great handling in the Lancia, which is good. Come over to the OM. So there's quite a few different cars to pick from. This one, good car. So I guess that's how we know it's a good one. All right, and get to the top of the list there. So we'll go back down. I think I might go with the Mila Milia Alfa Romeo. It's a heavy car, but it has very high resistance. The handling's not that bad. Uh, not good brakes, but I don't seem to use them too much anyway. So we'll pick this as our car. All right, so we have our drivers set up, Mario and Linguini, driving their Alfa Romeo, and so we'll continue on with that. All right, and so this brings us to our status summary. I guess this is where you would come after the event each year if you happen to finish it. Uh, I'm sure you could get pretty good at this, but uh, this is where you'd come between. And from what I can read in the manual, after you finish the Mila Milia, uh, depending on how you do, other teams would offer you a drive. And it sounds like there's somewhat of a career mode in this, which is very cool. And remember, this is 1991. Uh, so just a couple years after Indy 500 came out as a simulator, but you have to think of the other games that were out in 1991. This is very sophisticated and very, very cool for the time. Um, but this is, it's almost so easy to miss, but one of the most important things in the game overall is picking your spare parts. So we'll actually come into the spare parts menu. So like you'd expect, the race cars themselves were just road cars, maybe souped up a little bit. The roads, most were unpaved. Uh, some were paved, but a lot of different surfaces and things, very rough. And so your cars were prone to breaking down a lot. And that happens uh, in the game as well. And so you have to pick spare parts to carry with you. You have a total of six that you can take. Uh, and so you have to plan this out. It seems like there's a little bit of luck involved here. Because if you don't take something and your car breaks down with it, you're pretty much out of the race. But a couple of things I've found you really need to take. Um, well, I won't take any spark plugs. Hopefully everything keeps firing all right. Uh, but fuel cans. You'll not make the race if you don't take at least uh, two fuel cans from what I can tell. Made it this far once to uh, have to take a second one on. So, yeah. If you don't take two fuel cans, there's no finishing the race. But outside of that, I think I'll take a water, uh, a spare tire. Sounds like a good idea. We'll chance it on the fuel pump. Uh, maybe take a fan belt. And uh, I did also have a dynamo go wrong once and ended my whole event for me. So that's my six parts. There's a little bit of strategy involved. Um, maybe some of this is based on how you drive, too. Obviously, if you hit stuff, things are more likely to break. But we'll just have to cross our fingers that we don't break uh, anything that I don't have. All right, and with that, we can start the Mila Milia. All right, so we're going to start the first leg of our journey, and we get a little info and other goodies about the first leg. So we're going to go from Presica to Parma. The race itself broken into a bunch of legs, so we'll get this screen after each, each one's complete, kind of like stages uh, in a rally type deal. It gives us a description as well, so it's generally flat few difficult S bends, 99 kilometers long, and we've got a dirt surface and clear weather. So it gives you a little bit of a preview of some of the things that'll change between stages. The surfaces themselves, every single one has a different different surface. And then the weather too becomes a factor as will the time of day and all that. But we'll get started with this. It's going to be a challenge <laughs> to try to get through, but I'll do my best. We'll do the Milo Milia. All right, and accelerate away, get up the gears. So this is the Milo Milia. 
will run it down to the first turn of very, of very many turns. So basically I've got a joystick here. I'm controlling this with a joystick and the goal is to keep it between the edges of the circuit. Um, it's a little interesting. It's not a hundred percent me controlling the car. It feels like your driver's skill maybe gets into it and then you're kind of suggesting where they go or helping out on the uh, tighter corners. Just slow down there. So here a couple cars coming from behind. Oh, there goes an alpha. So your main goal with this is to keep it between the edges of the track and if you hit anything on the edge, which I'm sure will happen in short order here, uh, your car will potentially break down and you gotta fix it and it costs you time and all that. And if you do that enough, the race is totally over for you. Um, so keeping it on the track is the main goal. Avoiding the other cars is the other one. I find in certain stages, certain legs that are much quicker than everybody else and then ones like this, they're just blasting past me. But sometimes you can pass them. They're mostly passing you though, or at least me. Uh, so you wanna try to go as fast as you can then to the end without going off at all. And I'm doing amazingly well so far for myself. Not going off the sides, a couple more cars going past. Here we go, get up a little speed. But the control scheme is really odd. So you're using a joystick, side to side turns it like you'd expect, but you can't really feel anything, obviously. It's barely suggesting where to go. Go through a chicane there. Ooh, hit something on the edge. Somehow it didn't damage the car enough to, to break us down. So survive the first one, cut the course again. Oh, and there we go. Finally, trouble screen. All right, so this is what happens. Hey, hold on, we're in trouble. The wheel's jammed. Hurry up. We've got to get moving. Do something. Come on, we're off. So then Gweenie's fixing the car and it cost us 13 minutes total. So you want to avoid this, but try to get going again. Let's go accelerate. The car's just blasting past, trying not to get hit or hit something else. I find it's really hard to get going again without running off the track. Ooh, no, did it again. <laughs> Another 12 minutes we got in the first stage. I don't know exactly how many times you're able to go off and restart. Uh, on the bottom here, we have the kilometers per hour gauge. We got an RPM gauge, and then we uh, uh, have our fuel gauge, which will be important with the two, two little things of fuel we took. Ooh, oh my God, I came close to a group of people there. Taking the shortcut route. Um, and then you have this, I think, temperature gauge. Maybe that's what tells you if you're close to, to breaking down for good. But overall, all about keeping it in between the lines and finally finish the first leg. So I made it through one at least, but we've arrived in Parma. Uh, Mario has made it with Linguini as co-driver. So 99 kilometers done in an hour and a half, averaging 65 kilometers per hour. That's not that good. Um, and we're in ninth place. Okay. So we're barely holding on. If you're too slow, what I've discovered is it says... Uh, placement unknown, <laughs> but at least we're placing so far, but we got to keep that speed up. The average speed is really what's important uh, over the whole distance. So hopefully we can go up from 65 without breaking down. You can definitely place, but the breaking down part's hard. All right, for second leg, Parma to Bologna, or as I like to say, Bologna. Uh, but it's a flat road, good condition with a lot of easy bends, 100 kilometers on dirt, once again, with clear weather. So same deal. Uh, easy bends though, so hopefully this one's a little easier. And accelerate away. Oh, so we got Lancias now. Seems like you get one car per stage per leg that's gonna be passing you, or that you'll be passing. Try to get up. Oh, my god, I'm running off the track already. Try to get up to fourth gear. There we go. Ah, oh, somehow I already broke down. 12 minutes of repairs. A couple more cars stream past. Really need to try to keep it on the track. It's not not easy at all though. The acceleration is the weirdest part, just trying to deal with the throttle the way it is. Well, I hit the back of that Lancia there. Very hard to avoid the cars. There's not a lot of room on the track to, to move around, so not that much unlike real life, so run wide a little bit again there. Try to get Zen moment here and get focused. Of course, in, in the real Mila Milia, if we could draw any parallels, you wouldn't exactly know where the circuit's going. So it's all about just trying to keep your speed up and not <laughs> not hitting things like I'm doing. But I feel like for 1992, this gives a great impression. I think this would have been so much fun. I think I was a little bit busy with flight simulators and things at the time. But, uh, you know, it's not a driving sim, of course. There really was only one driving sim or a couple driving sims up to this point. Um, but simulation itself takes a lot of horsepower. 
horsepower. So you can see better graphics here than something like Indy 500 or uh, Jeff Crammon's games from the time. Whoa, just run to the edge there. I thought we were going to break down again. Uh, but the graphics can be a lot better because you got less physics things running. Still a lot of fun, though, and I love the management aspect of this. I think it adds a lot. Uh, I'd love to see what happens if you actually finish the Mila Milia. Wow, it's a really bouncy track. Love to see what happens once you finish a season. Supposedly, according to the manual, you you know can sign up with another team depending on your result and things. Or maybe it just ends altogether if you don't place. So I need to try to keep the speed up. So we're coming to the end, I'd imagine, of this leg. It's going all right after the start. Pass one of them. Lancias. Just try to negotiate the chicanes. All right, straight line. There we go. Past the signs. You see little black signs pass on the edge, but oh, not too bad. We finally made it to Bologna, so we're good to go there. Overall, two hours, 45 pass. We're up to 73 kilometers per hour average, so that's good. Although that, that leg was faster, but we're up to fifth overall, so not too bad, even with the breakdown. All right, next up, third leg, and this is the one that catches me out, but we're going from Bologna or Bologna to Firenze. So difficult course, mountainous, with several dangerous S-bends, 95 kilometers, and a snowy road surface with snow weather. Yeah, somehow we're already in the mountains, I guess, and uh, had no transition, so we're just going straight to snow. Uh, but this one is difficult. It's a little narrower, I think, to the others, and uh, also very slippery, not as grippy. So we'll just see if I can survive it. I'd be thrilled if I can get through it without going off too many times. But away we go. You can see, I'm in very impressed, you know, looking at this and the change in the scenery. This is the first stage that looks quite a bit different, and uh, I think it looks good. Looks like I'm in the snowy weather, maybe not in the mountains, as I get run off the course there. Everybody's streaming past. Really makes you feel like you're going uh, going slow. 15-minute repairs, that's not good. To try to get going, get some general speed up. But there we go, some snow pouring down now. The Amiga version here looks a lot better than the DOS version overall in the graphics department. I think the Amiga was just a bit better at this type of scrolling, uh, you know, scenery, 3D effect that it does here. Um, but pretty good looking game for the time. Uh, and I love the circuits. They're actually not randomly generated or anything. Or else, you know, it feels like that when you're driving it, and that's kind of how it's supposed to feel for the Mila Milia. So it's kind of fitting game, but they're not randomly generated. I've done the first few here a few times just to uh, get the bearings of it all and try to be at least semi-decent at this, and absolutely you can recognize parts of the track and uh, how it goes. So you could learn all this, I guess, if you really were dedicated to it, and I'm sure some folks back in the day were the hill here straight section i think so this is going all right after that first breakdown but there's some really tricky parts you just can't see far enough ahead <laughs> to react to it so you kind of need to slow down whenever you're not sure where you're going and you don't really need to worry about the cars that you're passing or not passing it's a good gauge on if you're going way too slow but they're not actually the cars you're racing against more just scenery so you wouldn't let it affect your driving We've got some cars coming up behind. Just need to make sure they don't slow me down is the main thing. Just try to negotiate it here through the mountains. There's some much easier stages later on, too, so they don't just get progressively difficult. It's actually trying to replicate the event somewhat, which is cool. A lot of these games, the older arcade-style games, just every single level, every single track gets a little harder, and obviously that's not how uh, how things actually are. So this is, this is one of the more challenging ones, but it's working out so far. Over the rise here, down the hill, accelerated out towards red line. Ooh, I'll pass one of the cars there. I couldn't even see it. But there we go, across the line. So finished finally that snow stage without too much issue. 73 kilometers an hour, so we lost two kilometers an hour, but we're still in fifth. So this is this is the best I've done on this so far. So it's good I'm recording this one. But four hours total going to Firenze. All right, so now from Firenze to Siena. I believe is how you would say that. I'm probably butchering all the names, but I do know Bologna and Bologna are different things. But uh, this one, the road is rather good condition, but hilly and several dangerous bends. 56 kilometers. This one's a lot shorter, but I think this is a, a pretty intricate one. So 56 kilometers, dirt track, and uh, clear weather. 
All right, where we go? Yeah, it's the farm one. I remember this one now with all the cows and farmers and fences neatly placed right next to the track. But we'll just try to guide ourselves through here. But I got a lot of a lot of time for games like this that have the little management aspect to them. It's not trying to be a simulator. I think there's a lot of fun. I, I think some of this stuff could be recreated uh, pretty simply and, and could be a lot of fun. Um, serious simulators these days are getting a little over serious sometimes. It's fun to drive realistic cars, but it's also just as fun to have these types of experiences. I think uh, more games like this could exist in my book. Overall, for a game from 1991, I think it looks really good, like I've been saying. Weave through. Ugh, that's a tight one. Luckily, Mario is very skilled behind the wheel. And I want to show before I get too far. I'll actually hit spacebar there, which kind of pauses things and shows you the map. So this is where we're at with the whole thing. And there's a, a couple reasons to come to this screen. But you can see on the left here, the full circuit for the Mila Milia goes all the way from Brescia down to Rome, uh, Roma there at the bottom, and then curves back up. And the up loops quite a bit longer going through the mountains and twisty parts quite a few times. But each of the cities called out, those are obviously the different uh, cities that we stop at between legs. Uh, but it gives you a good sense of where we're traveling to and the scenery, I guess, roughly reflects, you know, what we're doing. We just went through that snowy region uh, and you can see we're in the mountains and everything. So it's pretty cool. The reason to come here is this is where you can uh, do the switching of uh, driver to co-driver. Um, you know, in these days, two drivers in the car, one was mostly a mechanic. But for something like this, where you're racing for almost 24 hours or maybe over that, you're going to swap out at some point. So uh, that's exactly what you can do here. You can have I could have Linguini take over and uh, he's much worse at driving, much better mechanic. But uh, you need to do this, I guess, at various stages, the manual says, to make sure your driver doesn't run out of steam. So I don't know exactly how to tell how far along anybody is, um, you know, without running out of uh, <laughs> staying awake or something. But um, yeah, this is where you can swap it. I'm going to keep them as they are right now, but we're coming up on Mario's best uh, uh, leg of the journey, Balsena to Roma. So that'll be the uh, the last one here. And then we'll switch over to Linguini for, for his best and see how things end up that way. All right. Oh, ran into the barriers there, resuming, but luckily didn't break down the car. We'll just continue on straight here. This one's going okay so far. It's a shorter, shorter leg overall. And I do like the little bollards on the side of the track. Helps you keep... And there we go. That was actually easy. It helps you keep sight on the edges, but still in fifth, up to 74. So we went back up 74 kilometers an hour. Uh, everything looking quite good. All right, so next leg, Siena to Balsena, Balsena maybe, but the road is good enough shape, little mountains, but rather easy. That's what I like to hear. 137 kilometers on this one, so this will be a, a little bit longer, but dirt surface, clear weather, so all will be looking good uh, on this one. And away we go, get some nice flowers there to the to the right. Be honest, I've made it further than I thought I would, <laughs> thought I would on this. Oh, I got slowed down there. So we'll just try to keep going with it. I wasn't anticipating getting super far into the the whole Mila Milia, but you know what? If I can get through most of it, or God forbid I get through all of it, you will see that here and be able to judge by the length of this video how much I'm actually able to get through. Also keep in mind, there's a chance just randomly the car breaks down or something and I have no say, <laughs> no say in that. And if I, you know, I didn't take the battery for instance, and if the battery brakes or doesn't work anymore. I have nothing to replace it with and journey over. So a little bit of luck involved, but this one's not so hard so far. Just going straight down this dirt road. Famous last words, obviously. Ooh, as I get right to the edge. Gosh. You can tell we're starting to get to more maybe of the valley. Get into the valley or maybe like the southern parts of Italy, central Italy here. Slowing down a little bit over some of these rises. So the car keeps speed until you start going uphill, and then it uh, seems to slow down on its own. Oh, I'm just keeping it in the lines like a pro here. <laughs> a 
and over the rises. Oh my gosh, if I can finish this one without breaking down at all, going quite quick. I feel like I'm getting greedy with it. Mario and Linguini are very much enjoying themselves so far. So we're coming to the southern portion of the circuit. I got a car behind me passing me, but that's all right. Don't worry about it. A little bit of a straight section there. Yeah, I don't know how you would ever remember all of this, but I'm sure somebody did. I'm sure, you know, if this was the only thing you had to play for a couple years, I'm sure you would uh, learn quite a lot of it. just threading the needle. I'm just waiting for those signs to end the round, end the leg. Ooh, coming up on this alpha, making me run a little wide. Oh, got knocked there from one of the alphas. Nothing you can do about that. They just kind of run into you. Ooh, and I hit the edge. No. Ah, oh, 15 minutes lost. I was doing so well on this one. Just try to pick it right back up. End strong. Hit another tree. Damn. 13 minutes. <laughs> it was going so well for so long. Just need to try to not do that again. Pretty much don't worry about the gears. The DOS version of this game has an auto-shifting option. Uh, but on the Amiga here, it doesn't seem like there's a possibility to have it auto-shift for you. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be an issue. You pretty much get it up to fourth gear and then just keep it there. There we go, past the end. Ah, it was so good for the first half of that. We're down to 73 kilometers an hour. Still in fifth, though. Be nice to get higher up, but I'm happy we're, we're still placing uh, overall. All right, now from Bolzana to Roma. So this is the one that Mario is apparently really good at. He's from this area. But it's a flat road surface with a few challenging S-bends. Hopefully, Mario's natural skill will help us through this. 103 kilometers, dirt and clear. Once again, no weather so far, which is surprising. So you can get weathering conditions or weather conditions with rain, fog. Uh, and you actually have controllable headlights on the car, too for those scenarios, but yeah, it's a little freaky. I got gravestones, it looks like, <laughs> right next to the edge of the circuit. I don't know what that's all about. Let's try to avoid those. Ooh, that didn't sound like my car. Maybe somebody behind me crashed. I'll just try to thread the needle here. Very curvy circuit, no straight section so far. There we go. Oh, running into the trees. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Luckily, still going, so I'm waiting for any one of these to end the whole event for me. It seems seems kind of random. I don't know if the temperature gauge, it might be what it is. It's halfway up right now. Oh, no. Oh, somehow we survived that. Just kind of stopped in our tracks. It's hard to shift up while you're driving because you need to actually have the joystick pointed forward to uh, shift. There we go. Ah, no, 12 minutes there. Ah, uh, this is not going well. This is supposed to be Mario's best stage. We'll swap him out after this one to have uh, Linguini do a little driving. Right, let's just try to finish strong here, Mario. Oh, that's not how we do it. Very tight, this one. This one might be the tightest yet. Oh, man. Running all over the edge. Another 16 minutes. This is not going well. I'm, I'm genuinely worried at this point that the next crash is going to be the end of the whole thing. Just try to keep it steady. Like I can do anything. It's, <laughs> it's kind of luck. Seem to be getting a little luckier. Oh, right to the edge. No, ran wide ah, through a tree. Still going, but another 16 minutes. We're going to be way down the order. Ah, just hitting stuff on the edge as we try to get going again. We just need to slow down a little bit in general. So, first few stages, first few legs went pretty well, but this one's nothing to uh, write home about so far. Hopefully, it comes to an end soon. a couple little signs, but not the one I want. 
Through a little chicane there, getting run over by another Alpha. Definitely not passing cars as much. I, I found overall the DOS version of this much more competitive, at least on the track. You pass cars way more than, than in this one. Um, even if you're doing poorly, you seem to always be passing. Oh, ran wide there, but didn't affect the car somehow. Toppled over a few of those weird stones at the edge of the circuit. They kind of look like mile markers. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, right to the edge. No, 14 minutes. Another 14 minutes lost. We're almost out of fuel as well. From what I know, there's no way to just refuel the car. You have to run out and then you will fill it up. There we go, across the line. Man, worst worst leg yet. Not proud of that, Mario, but we made it to Rome. So kind of halfway. We made it all the way south. We have to head north, and there's a little bit more journey. But, man, we lost a lot of positions, down to 63 kilometers per hour average and a tenth position. So maybe the low point, but we'll try to continue on. All right, so we're going to go from Roma to Spoleto, and it's a road not in good condition, hilly with a few dangerous bends. And this is going to be the one Luigi takes over. Luigi. <laughs> Linguini. Oh, I slipped. Uh, but we'll have him take over. It's apparently the route he knows well, although that didn't work out for Mario there. Uh, but a bumpy surface, clear weather. We'll see how it goes. And we'll uh, switch on over here. Swap drivers. All right, Linguini, show me what you got driving the old car. From what I can tell, when you have, like I said at the beginning, when you have lower skill, it's harder to turn and control. Like maybe the car doesn't do it uh, automatically quite as much. So we'll try our best here. Maybe not go quite as quick as I was last time. Scenery looks very much the same with a new orange tree there. But it is nice between all the different, you know, routes so far. I'm just getting blown past a bunch of Lancias there. But between all the different routes so far, it definitely feels like you're going somewhere. Uh, each one is different. We're covering the countryside. It's nice. It gives you the interstitial little bits of information about where you are, where you're going. You got the map to look at. You got the different spare parts, which somehow we haven't had to use yet. And uh, yeah, a pretty complete little game programmed really well. I mean, I think it's very clear that this was built uh, extremely, extremely well. It's not a slap together game at all. Like I said at the very beginning, kind of a passion project, it seems like, especially when reading the manual and the other text supplied. There's research and maybe just general knowledge poured into this. But All right, Linguini is doing all right so far. He's, uh, ooh, well, as I say that, he runs off the track. 15 minute repair. Oh, no. We'll try to accelerate it here. Get back up to some kind of speed. He was doing so well for the first half of it. Really want to pick the speed back up. I was up into fifth position, which is way higher than I've ever been. But as long as we don't fall off the placing here. We should be running out of fuel any second, and it will tell us. It will stop the car and tell us we filled up which I guess will lose us time as well, but perhaps there's a way to fuel the car, and the manual doesn't say anything about how to stop and fuel the car without losing time. You'd imagine they would do it between <laughs> between legs, but I guess it's uh, not a luxury we can have. All right, negotiating the stage well, though. Besides the one crash so far. Oh, and there we go. Another one. I should really just stop talking about it. <laughs> All right. Try to get through the end here. Slow down a lot through that tight right-hander. It's a reactions game. There's no, uh, no driving skill, but it is a good reactions test. straight section there. It's not all just hills. Just slap the wall a little bit. Continue on like nothing happened. This might be the hardest. One of the harder cars. Oh, I hit it again. 13 minutes. Losing a lot of time. This isn't going to be good. I'm trying to 
to speed on. Hopefully this is close to the finish line. Oh, another 16 minute repair. <laughs> this is dreadful. I challenge everyone out there to do better. <laughs> I hit the wall again. It just seems kind of random when you're going to uh, run off the track, but perhaps you could get good at it. Without going super slow, and maybe that's better ultimately because we're not going to lose multiple minutes. But there, finally crossed the line. Man, Linguini putting in the effort down to 57 kilometers an hour and oh no placement unknown so we've we've fallen out of the standings but we'll keep on we're still going we haven't broken anything yet so we're in spoleto all right this is also a hilly course with several hard s bends uh it's bumpy and still clear i'm disappointed i haven't seen any weather and uh maybe it's just the dos version that has a lot of weather but we will change back to our our racing driver mario i think ultimately he's a better choice. Oh, we can't swap all racing. Maybe I need to stop the car. Well, I guess Linguini will continue on for at least this stage, give Mario a little bit more of a break here. Hopefully he's able to do all right. Oh, already running wide <laughs> into a pole. 17 minutes. This is, we're nearing the end. I, I'd have to think. Oh man, there's just no way. How do you go over these bends? The, the traffic is what does it. It's, you know, if they weren't going so fast, I wouldn't be tempted to also go so fast. Oh, all right. So this is what happens when the fuel runs out. At least we made it, you know, through the tank. So the tank's completely dry, not a drop of petrol. Anyway, sharp people like us always carry extra fuel. And if you weren't carrying the extra fuel, it would say you have no extra fuel. And that would be the end. Uh, which is, especially after all that, can you imagine it just ending? Well, that's what happened to me a few times. But we'll see if the our old venerable Alpha here. We did pick the uh, heavy, heavy car. Oh, what did I tap there? 15 minute repair for, for what? The old Alpha is sticking with us, but I have a feeling, oh. <laughs> We're right towards the end. This is this is getting difficult. <laughs> difficult to watch, I'm sure. Oh man. Another 16 minutes. I don't know, maybe Mario and Linguini here weren't really cut out to be Millimilia stars, but they were aspiring. They saw Nuvolari and wanted to try to do something like that. Right. Cars flying past, but I'm at least keeping it on the track. This is a much curvier part of the, uh, of the circuit <clears throat> of the legs so far. Oh, a little straight section here with some nice light poles on either side. Oh, ran off to the left there, and that's it. Oh, I knew that was going to be it. I feel like it ran off so, so fast there. Went the wrong way, basically, over the crest, but what a mess. Doesn't look like we'll be able to fix it. Sorry, but this time we're out of the race for good. And so ends the journey, the legend of Mario and Linguini, their time at the Milla Milia. And we get the game over screen, of course, but nice little headlight artwork there. Yeah, overall, I mean, <laughs> despite the, the shoddy driving, hopefully it was enjoyable to, to learn a little bit about this game. I think it's the first classic car game that ever ever was created, 1991. Um, you know, a lot of the games from the time period now, you play them and the cars in them now are classic, but at the time they were contemporary. But this was absolutely a throwback to the 1920s and 30s and the great event that was the Milla Milia. And uh, I think it does a great job at it. For 1991, the graphics are very good. Uh, the handling and things is about as good as you would find anywhere. And then add in that simulation aspect with the different driver traits, car combinations. I mean, you could spend a long time just playing around with all the different combos and, and maybe actually finish the Milla Milia. So 
Mario Linguini here. We're not able to do it, but maybe you can. I dare you to try it out. It's not not as easy as it looks if it looked easy at all. But but thank you for watching. I hope it was fun to watch despite the uh, bad driving, but had a lot of fun doing it. Fun learning about these older games and things that exist and uh, a little bit of a gem. Fun for an evening, definitely with the Milo Milia game. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you all again next time.